hello everybody, um, we're doing a fucking afternoon, early in the morning coffee chat. <sighs> we're going to talk about something that I've been kind of putting on the back burner, waiting for this moment where I am awake and, um... I need to like kind of rant out and rage on some shit <clears throat> in order to get my blood pumping so I could like get on with my day and like start doing the shit that normal people do. <clears throat> so anyway, um, one of the things that um, I've been writing a lot about is uh, Insta poetry or Instagram poets. And um, there are, like for the last, what, like six years or some shit, there's been like the Instagram poet rock stars that have their um, publishing deals and put out their shit books with their minimalistic covers which I actually really appreciate if any of these people's poetry was as good and intriguing as their covers we wouldn't be having this conversation right now but um, like I've said in other videos it's all bullshit it's all shit it's all fucking crap um, to an extent and what I mean by that is, I've been watching um, a lot of videos over um, the last, I've been recently watching a lot of videos that have been made over the last few years about this topic. And a lot of the videos are just like bitching about it. And it's funny, you know, like whatever. Um, people complaining about the lack of form, people complaining that, like, this is just a sentence, people complaining about the structure and stuff. And I haven't been a stickler about the structure of it because I feel like that's not the problem. That's not the problem we have here. And I was trying to articulate my thoughts in a way that is different from how I've written about it, <clears throat> or at least a way to communicate it with you in a way that's different from how I wrote about it. Um, just so I'm not just like saying the same fucking thing over and over again. And then I came across a video from like two years ago by this dude, Mike Frost. And boy, golly, it just like washed refreshing water over me, man. Like it was exactly how I'm feeling about this for the most part. Um, enough to where I was like, yes, brother, fucking preach, preach it, brother. Come on. Bring it on home now. And the thing that he said, and I, I'm, I'm going to link the video down below. The thing he said that um, was so powerful to me was that he, he too doesn't mind the format of the, he doesn't mind the idea of Insta poetry or Instagram poetry or um, Twitter poetry, or anything like that. In fact, he looks at it as the next frontier in poetry. <clears throat> or he did two years ago. Um, and I agree with that. I agree that, like, now that there is, or that there are um, easier venues... Um, to be able to express yourself 
and express yourself in a way that um, it can be published instantly and everyone can read it. That's a really awesome, powerful thing. <clears throat> but I'll veer off from his views now and go into mine just to make it clear. My biggest fucking problem with this is that no one has anything to fucking say. And just because you can doesn't mean you should, you have to, or that it will be any good. Um, just because you can cut off your ear doesn't make you Van Gogh. You know, like... <clears throat> do you understand what I'm saying here? So, like, these people, man, um, this, um, I'm going to go after a couple people here, and I'll actually call them out. I never wanted to do it before. But, um, considering everybody fucking calls people out, and it's not a big deal, kind of don't give a shit anymore. <clears throat> um, there's one dude who is so forgetful. I can't remember his name. It's like Michael fucks a lot or something like that. Um, he writes poetry where he's letting vulnerable women know that he knows his way around a pussy and that's really clever and good and it shows all these women that um who are vulnerable and sad that if they ever do run across him um he, he will know the difference between a clit and a g-spot so that's fascinating like we're all very happy about that. Um, and then there's this guy, R.H. Sin, who, when I first read his book, I thought he was a 14-year-old overweight white girl who was upset because she slept with the football team and none of them loved her. Um, and then, like, I just kept reading it, and I'm like, what the fuck is this? It just sounded like angsty teen bullshit and then I started like putting like two and two together and I'm like oh wait a second so for those of you who don't know like since the dawn of time since the dawn of poetry since the dawn of the love letter um men have been using poetry to be able to get into girls pants because that's what they do. And they really enjoy this whole idea of saying what they think vulnerable women want to hear in order for them to be the hero, the knight in shining armor, the whatever. And it is pandering. And it is disgusting. And fucking publishing houses are putting this shit out because young impressionable women who are vulnerable eat this shit up um, because they need to feel validated and they need to feel cared for and they need to feel loved and this RH sin motherfucker is saying shit like oh like you you are hurt and I know you're hurt because you're reading this book you know, if you feel like this, if you, if you're like screaming inside and no one's listening, um, click this link to buy my book, my next book. Like, don't get help. Don't, don't talk to someone who could actually help you in the minute. The only way you're going to be able to get through this horrible, tragic thing is by buying my new fucking book where I keep telling you and telling you and telling you that you've been victimized and that I understand you. And as far as I know, this motherfucker already got a piece of ass that he married from his poetry. Like, he met her through Instagram and stuff. So I don't know why he's still trying to fucking bag fucking 
I don't know, like a third of the fucking female population. It's like, it's fucking disgusting. And it wouldn't be so bad if he was just on Twitter doing this or on Instagram. But there are companies putting money behind this motherfucker and saying that these actions are okay in order for fucking people to buy this shit. And Barnes & Noble fucking parades this shit out on their end caps like, hey, not only is this poetry, but it's fucking good and you need it. It's just fucking disgusting. Now, um, <clears throat> the chick who I see, there's two chicks that I see everywhere. That, um, rupee chick, the milk and honey chick, and then the chick who thinks she's, a, uh, um, what do you call it? Like a fairy tale princess, or a witch, or, but, and her stories, like, things are different. And, um, in her stories, everything's about fucking fire and stardust, and every woman's powerful because they're full of fire and stardust and shit like that. And there's, um, moons and locks and keys and stars and fire and strength and you know, I don't fucking know what the hell is going on, you know? If people dig this and it makes them feel good, knock yourself out. The one thing that I don't like about a lot of people who've been reviewing this shit is that they're like, none of this is revolutionary. Hardly anything is. Who fucking gives a shit? I don't need anything to be fucking revolutionary. I just need someone to have something to fucking say and not just repeat themselves every fucking page in doing this in a way to, like, pander to victimize people. So, like, you have these dudes who, like, I know what a clit is, I know you've been um, abused, love me. Like, you have those guys, and then you have these women who are like, yeah, girl, like, I know, I know, I know. You're better than that. Mic drop. That's fine, you know, but from what it looks like, this shit's been going on for like the last like five or six years. And there hasn't been a change to anything. It's still the same fucking thing. That's not okay. You will have diminishing returns if you just keep putting the same stuff out. And the thing that pisses me off more than anything is that the publishing houses fucking know this. So why are they allowing this to fucking happen? They're doing this to themselves. They are taking this poetry and letting it run its course. And at the end of this, it is going to hurt poetry in the long run because by the time these victimized women grow up, they're going to, like, grow up to, I don't fucking know, however old you have to be to be grown up. Um, they're going to be like, wow, <clears throat> poetry's really cool and it got me through a lot of stuff, but um, I don't need to be told that I'm victimized anymore because I'm a grown-ass woman and I bought my own value meal at the drive through Like, I don't need this shit no more. And then that's what they're going to assume poetry is. That's disgusting. You're killing poetry by putting out this fucking crap. Um, now, to completely change gears here, there are other poets that I've been following on Instagram trying to see if there's any, like, correlation. Like, is it a thing where, like, in order to be a modern-day poet... You have to write to victimize people and explaining to them that you understand them. And it turns out that's not the case. But you have the far end of the spectrum where these people want to set themselves apart from the Insta celebrities by being so overly wordy and overly descriptive and overly... Um, using as many 
different words to explain the color blue without saying the word blue. Um, that a lot of their stuff <clears throat> says a lot, but doesn't say anything. So you have these people over here that say very little and say nothing. And then you have the people over here that say tons of stuff and say nothing. So um, there needs to be something. And like um, Mike said, like who I was talking about earlier in the video, this could be a renaissance era of poetry with social media. Social media has been training us to say a lot in very small spaces. S say a lot of things, have a lot of meaning in it, and only so many characters. Okay? That, it, that in and of itself is a form of poetry. Being able to do that. And a lot of people who are traditionalists, a lot of people who are um, in university taking their fucking poetry courses and, you know, their professor says this, so this has to be the only way things fucking work. And my professor also only butters his left piece of toast before his right, so that's the only way you could butter toast. And my professor, when he wakes up, he goes, ooh, la, ooh and then puts his feet on the ground, and then does three jumping jacks, so that's the only way to get out of bed. You have to let your soul out. You just have to yell out, Oobla ooh! And then you get up, and you put it, and then you do three jumping jacks, because that's the only way to do it, because that's what my professor said. Um, there are no absolutes in the world, people, and I know the whole idea of form is to put absolutes on things, but it's not. It's putting an absolute on one thing, and since it's only putting an absolute on one thing, that cannot be an absolute for all things. <sighs> so, um, I gotta wrap this up. I have to pick my kid up from school. Um, so anyway, what I'm trying to say here is, um, this could be good, but just fucking have something to say. Please, for the love of God, have something to say. I don't care if you post on Instagram or Twitter, but write something that has something to say. And if you really just want to, like, take advantage of victimized women, that's fine. But do it. No, it's not fine. You're a piece of shit. And you should be drugged through the street and killed. So, um, I guess that's it. Um... I don't know. Um, there's four spots left in my Poetic Anarchy course that starts in a couple weeks. Um, I'll have information down below, and I guess I'll see you later. Let me know what you think of this. Am I losing my mind? I might be. Okay, bye.